hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on how we can go ahead and audit our Django applications so we're going to use the Django easy audit package so hopefully as the name implies that is very simple and straightforward to implement so we can start to audit our application so I just want to go through a few things before we get started so as you can see the steps are quite easy but I really want to direct your attention here to the full step here. So essentially speaking, we'll be able to analyze all of the CRUD events on our application. We'll also be able to audit the trackings that pertain to users that are making requests on our website and also users that are logging in and logging out of our application. So there's going to be three areas in which we can focus. So CRUD, request to our application and login slash logout for our users. So we've got a lot of things that we can audit with this particular package. So let's get started and install everything. Now, the one thing I do want to mention is make sure that you have a simple Django project up and running. So I've literally just created one. And all I need to do, of course, is just make my default migrations, which I will do now. So I'm going to say Python manage .py migrate. Okay. There my default migration is done. Now let's install this package. So pip install Django easy audit. And so I'm going to install it in my virtual environment. Okay, it will just take a moment. So as we can see, there are a lot of other sub -pack packages along with it. Then we want to add easy audit to our installed apps. So I'll go to my settings.py file, navigate to installed apps, and I'll just go ahead and paste it right there at the end. I'll just ensure I add it in line. So make sure you add it in easy audit to your list of installed apps. Then what you want to do is add the Django easy audit middleware to your middleware. So I'm going to copy this and I want to paste it right at the end of my list here, like so. Great, and the next thing I need to do is run Python manage.py migrate easy audit to create the audit models, which is going to store all of the various logs. So I'm just going to now run Python manage.py migrate easy audit. Perfect, there we go. So we've got everything set. Now, what I want us to do now is to create a super user. So I'm going to say Python manage.py create super user. I'm going to set it to my name, skip email, add in a password. And again, and let's run my server. There we go. And I'm going to head on to Django admin. And all I want you to do now is to just log in with your Django super user credentials that you just created. Right, and once you've entered that in, you can log into your account. And as you can see, we have gone ahead and installed the Easy Audit application to our Django app. And we can also see what we can audit. So CRUD events, login events, and request events. So let me give you an example here, or a few. So under CRUD events, okay, we can see if we click on there that we just created a super user called Arno. And if that is pertaining to super users, it's going to show create an update here. So you can see that being a CRUD event. If we go to login events, we can see that I just logged in as my user Arno. And under request events, okay, we can see that there are no requests as of this moment. However, if I were to log out out of my Django admin panel and let me go ahead and stop my server and create a new super user. Okay, this will be seen as a CRUD event. I'm going to give the username of Mark. Let's get the email and a password. Again and run my server. Great, and now what I want to do is I want to go to my homepage 
and I'm just going to refresh it a few times. Then I'm going to go to the admin page. And now I want to log in as Mark. All right, and I can log in. So now if I go to CRUD events now, I should have I should have another um, event here. So creating a user. So automatically, like I said, it's going to also show update since we are since this is focused on creating a super user. So we can see that's working correctly. So a CRUD event, login events. Now you can also see if a particular user that is part of your default authentication mechanism if they have logged out as well. So if they've logged in and they've logged out and we can see I'm currently logged in as Mark. So that user is currently logged in. We can see the date, the time, we can see the user, we can also see their IP. So if this was hosted and um, with a domain name, we would actually see the IP address of that particular user that's logged in and when they logged out and that particular user. And also under request events, we can see a list of all of the requests that were made to our application and we can see at the URL. So I only have the home page, and that's going to just uh, be a forward slash, but I can of course see the date and time, the method that was utilized. Um, of course, I haven't got a user that signed in at the moment, so it's not going to show that now. However, if I was authenticated and I made various requests, it's going to show up here. So Essentially, if you have your own application and you're making get requests or post requests and you're signed in as that user or authenticated as that user, it's then going to populate instead of a dash for blank, it's going to show that user the method that they um, processed and that URL where they did it or what they requested along with the IP if it's hosted with a domain name, etc. And of course, we'll be able to see the date and the time as well. Same thing goes for login events. This is not only going to pertain to the Django admin panel. If you have the default functionality of Django in place of your application, it should automatically detect um, when your users logged in, when they logged out, and that particular user. And of course, the same goes for CRUD events. Um, depending on what you have done in your application, it should show the various details um, here and there throughout your application. So I'm just going to also show you, you can also delete some of this data. So let me just uh, go ahead and delete everything here, all the CRUD events. I'm going to select the checkbox, go to action. And here I can say delete selected CRUD events or I can export it to a CSV file. So something also interesting about the Django Easy Audit Package is you can export all of your logs to a CSV file so you can further analyze the data. So it's really quite the ultimate package if you want to track logs, etc. I know I've made many videos before covering auditing. However, this one seems quite powerful and it's really quite useful for the data that you are receiving. So I'm going to say del delete selected CRUD events, go, scroll down, say yes I'm sure, and they have all been deleted. So if I just head on back to CRUD events, I can see that they're all gone. You can also go ahead and say purge CRUD events. Um, this is something else you can also do. So as you can see here, what would happen here is it's going to warn you if you're sure of doing this and it cannot be undone. So it's going to remove all of the objects. So that's something I could have done as well. So for example, in login events, what you can do is if you have a lot of data, like a backlog of data, you can just go ahead and purge it. So if I say purge login events and say, yes, I'm sure, it's just automatically going to delete all the events. Now this is helpful if you have a lot of logs, especially in the request events here. So this is where it's probably going to take time because you're going to have a lot of requests to your application and it will probably take a few minutes. Um, depending on the intricacies of your application. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video tutorial. I just wanted to show you how you can audit your Django application. And I think that the Django Easy Audit Package is definitely one that you should consider utilizing. It's also very simple, as you can see, very straightforward, very easy, and it's very valuable for auditing and compliance um, regulation, etc. So something I'd recommend that you definitely check out. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video tutorial. And of course, um, thank you for the support as always. And I'll see you next time. Thank you and see you.